Hi there everyone. I recently made a tutorial on how to make this sort of iterative tentacle system where you have a point or a series of points, you move that point and with a feedback loop in pops you keep iteratively adding points. So you see all these little trails here. These are all individual points that have been added to that trail in this pop feedback loop. We've set up some additional constraints here like deleting particles when they reach a certain distance away from the center. What I've encountered online is um, I have a few people who've had some issues with this system in terms of memory getting very heavy on the computer. So we have a few people here um, who've been chatting and they've received some emails as well. Now, I want to kind of take you through a few things that are going to help speed up the system as well as looking at a few debugging things. What we can see right now is I have this fairly stable frame rate. I've been running this for a few minutes. I'm also recording my screen and right now I'm able to get 60 FPS. This is a very different story if I go inside this operator. You can see just from going inside I lose a lot of um, my frame rate. It went from 60 to 24. So we lost a lot of FPS there. So one thing that we can sort of quickly do to speed this system up, and as we can see it kind of moves over time, it, it reduces in frame rate basically as it adds. I'm not quite sure why, but it does. But one easy fix that's going to help us out a little bit is basically disabling the viewer on everything. So we can see here that with my viewer disabled, I'm getting a fairly sturdy 60 FPS, which is great. In terms of the setup, I'll quickly go through that. Um, I have 200 points, which I am cycling through, and then I will delete these particles when they are a specific distance away from the center that's set up through this loop. What we can see here is even though I have muted all of these viewers in Touch Designer, we're still getting this sort of memory increase over time. So we can see here we have this GPU memory and it's creeping up and creeping up. Let's just take a look at this info towards the end of our chain. And so what we have here basically is we have this system where we are continuously adding points. And even though we have this delete mechanism when things get too far away from the center, we are still kind of adding. We're also seeing that whilst we only want to add points, we also have a significant number of vertices and primitives as well. So there's two things I'm going to do to hopefully help speed the system up a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to delete points when we get to a certain number. So basically right now we're just deleting points when we get far away, but I also want to add in another delete to delete points when we get to a certain threshold here. So I'll add in a delete after my math mix. So it's going to basically be here, delete, delete, delete. This is going to be sort of the parent of these two, and this is going to allow only a certain number of particles through. I'm going to plug that in. Sometimes this will cause me glitches if I don't set it before, but let's be daring. I'm going to save the sketch so I can come back to it later if I do crash. So on this first delete, I'm going to go to attribute and under attribute, we have all these attributes that we have created as part of the tutorial to move the particles and scale them and all the nice stuff we're seeing here. What I actually want to do is I want to look at some of the inbuilt attributes of these particles. So the specific information I'm interested in is this point i, so the point index. And what we can do here is we can say if the point i is bigger than something, it's going to delete. In this case, point i is generally bigger than zero. So we're going to have basically nothing. And what we're seeing is just the, the edge of our system, which we've set up here. So I'm going to set a value that's fairly big, like I'll set this value of 20,000 and let's see what happens here. Okay, let's restart that system. So here we can see that the system overall is a little bit less dense in the center here because we have less particles. Depending on how 
um, good your computer is in terms of its GPU. You can push this higher, you can even push it up to something like 100,000 particles. And basically this is going to be a hard limit for how many particles we actually have in the system. I'm going to go down to 50,000 because that seems like a reasonable amount. And we can see here that when we have this number of points, we should never get above 50,000 points or whatever we've set in this delete point i value. However, we can see that we also have these additional elements that are cooking here. So we have these vertices and these primitives, and these are still expanding even though we have limited our number of points. One way I have found of sort of removing this is after my attribute is basically just stripping everything that's not needed with a convert. So attribute convert and then connect that in. We want that to be merged as well, otherwise we're gonna keep merging in all these additional points and vertices. So when I go to convert, I want to just strip all this information that we don't need. We just want the point. So I'm gonna say convert, keep points, delete primitives. If I reset that system, now we're going to see that we basically don't have anything visually appearing. Although if we go and look at these internally, we can see something's actually happening on a point scale. So an easy way to then view this at the end is to convert again for both our geos and say point to pointless primitive. And do that again. There may be a more elegant way of doing this. I have seen people using the topology to do various things with limiting the particles. I've also seen people saying that they've used a limit to limit these particles to a certain um, amount. I found for me that this convert method is the best way to go because it does actually strip out that additional information. So you can see here, we just have our point values here and our frame rate is relatively stable. Let's see what's happening when we get to this memory. So unfortunately, we do still have this sort of memory increase frame by frame. I'm not quite sure why this is happening and we'll take a few more looks at some debug methods to get an idea. We can see as we start the system, we have a smaller amount of GPU memory in use, and that slowly increases frame by frame by quite a significant amount over time. And at this point, it should relatively be the same because we are limited to this number of points. We should be deleting all that additional information. There may have been something I've overlooked here, so if anyone has any fixes, this would be awesome to see. I'm also going to be posting this on the Touch Designer forum to see if anyone has any ideas on things I might be overlooking. One thing we can do is obviously we have some debug tools in Touch Designer. So here I'm looking at the show cook. So here I'm seeing my frame time is 16 milliseconds. So it basically takes 16 milliseconds to process each frame. My GPU memory is 1680 something megabytes and that's increasing. The CPU memory is the same. So just in terms of what we have going on here, for anyone that might want to be taking a cursory look at this and trying to fix this glitch, is we have our initial point generation system. So we've assigned some attributes to these points. We're converting that just to points with the attributes for age and all that kind of stuff attached. And then we're putting it into a feedback loop. So every frame, we're adding in this initial center position and then we're applying velocity and all that kind of stuff to it through the feedback loop and that gives us this effect but basically this is the section here where we're iteratively adding basically from here to this null and to control that a little bit we're deleting a lot of stuff so let's see what happens if i actually just go ahead and limit this even more so let's say if i limit this to 5000 points let's see how that works for the gpu memory what we're seeing is that even if we go in and do a hard delete, so something like 50 points, it doesn't actually seem to make a difference in the GPU memory in this sort of memory leak. So that's something to maybe pay attention to is that there's something that is being held on the GPU even though we are seemingly deleting these points. 
a useful tool we can use to navigate this system is something called a probe. And a probe gives us various ways of viewing a system and seeing what is essentially going on. We can look at the CPU, the GPU, and memory in use. So let's go and take a look inside this project. I do find this a little bit hard to navigate, so bear with me. So this is the CPU memory. And what we can see here is that the things that are taking the most CPU are these initial stages here. We have the random and point generator pops are taking quite a lot of CPU. We also can see that this probe takes a bit of CPU and also this info chop. So that one's an easy one to sort of fix. We can just turn off that info chop. We don't really need that. And we can see that that now goes to being something that's relatively low latency. We're not super interested in the CPU, however, because our issues are most likely occurring on the GPU. So let's take a look at the GPU here. We can see that this is kind of our setup. As we go into this noise, we are changing the noise as we go through it. So let's just take a quick look at that and the transform. We're changing the noise to basically set up these different velocities. So that's something that is updating every frame as we feed that into the system just to ensure each point gets a uh, different direction. But that's relatively okay. What we can see is that this merge is taking a bit of a beating in comparison to everything else. So if we, for example, try and turn down the number of starting particles, let's just do like 20 and reset that the merge is doing a lot better. So partially this is just going to relate to the amount of load that is on that system. Let's look at the GPU memory. So here we have things that are going to be using the most amount of memory. So quite a lot of heavy lifting here. So all this stuff is essentially going to be taking a lot of points that is also going to be dynamically growing. So this stuff is all quite heavy which is sort of to be a little bit expected. I'm not necessarily seeing here what is iteratively adding to, to that system. A few things we can do as this system isn't completely optimized to make sure it runs to the best of its ability is we can sort of limit the number of particles to something that makes sense. For me, about 200 particles looks good and also allows me to run at FPS 60 pretty much consistently, I haven't really noticed any significant frame drops. What we can also do is make sure that everything is not viewed in the viewer here so that we can actually run this network at a much faster speed. We can see that if I sort of leave this running for a while, my frame rate starts to drop. But if I actually just go in and make these viewers inactive, we go up to 60. And so for me, this is fairly consistent. Even if I go in and put in something like 2000 particles, the frame rate is going to be reasonably consistent. In this case, I would actually have to go here and maybe do something like 200,000 just to scale that up a little bit because what we have going on here is essentially we're deleting points after they get to this certain threshold. If you do want to run a lot of points, then you can just bypass that delete. But even for me, running this huge amount of information through is actually giving me a pretty fast frame rate. We can see this is slowing down a little bit and we have a large number of points right there. And that's gonna increase kind of exponentially. But even at this point, I'm able to run at 60 FPS. If you are having issues, you can always go in and play with this overall delete. This can also be a sort of a fun effect as well, because what you can do is you can you can sort of see how things pulse out in different ways. So you can get this sort of more nebulous effect. So actually having this extra thing could be made part of the aesthetic. So this is one sort of option for just smoothing out that system a bit. Something else, and this is the main thing that I found actually just resets that, that GPU kind of cooking time is let's just look at that show cooks again. It is going to knock my frame rate a little bit, but that's okay. So we can see that this GPU memory is going up a lot. If I press my reset, 
it will take it back to the beginning. So this is something that is very useful. So if you're doing something that is some kind of performance-based set, let's actually look at this outside. If you're doing something that's in any way performance-based, if there's some kind of interactive, responsive element, maybe to audio or to user interaction, what I'd recommend is just every now and then, just reset that system. We can see now it's slowly going up in GPU memory. Let's let it go to about 820, and then we will reset that. So I'll just pulse my key. And we can see it goes down in terms of GPU memory usage. So feel out if you're interested in using this system, how much GPU memory is being used and maybe set a threshold for when things get restarted. This can be a useful way to maintain this effect whilst also being a bit more gentle on your computer. One of my favorite things about this system is actually how it grows. I love that growing motion and seeing those little tendrils appear and the lights on the end. So this would be one workaround, is just kind of resetting it at varying frequencies. This is basically a little walkthrough of some optimization tips and tricks that we can do for this. As I say, unfortunately, I haven't quite figured out what is going on with this just overall increasing memory. Likely something that's to do with this delete loop and the fact that we're deleting particles from a feedback loop, there might be some overhang here. For me, I'm on an M1 Mac and it's been pretty stable. I haven't noticed any major lags. I've been able to run it for a long time and it's maintained itself at 60 FPS. We can just take a quick look here at this info and we get an idea of also how much GPU memory I'm working with here. So quite a lot in comparison to where this is actually hitting. So this is something to obviously keep in mind. I apologize for not having a more sort of robust fix right now. For me, this is still experimenting and learning these tools, and this will hopefully be an interesting excursion in finding out a little bit more about the back ends of POPs. But overall, I'm interested to see what these limitations are and hear from you as well what your limitations are with different machines with these types of systems, because that's one of the exciting things about building and learning with these new tools. Because this has been found to be a bit glitchy on some people's computers, I'm gonna make this current version with these optimizations available for free in a link in the comments using Google Drive so you can download and play with this yourself. In return, what I'd like to see is if people find any fixes, if you could comment in the chats or email me your kind of modified files, I'd be really interested to see how you approach this and if there are some nice fixes, what I'll do is I'll add them to the Google Drive with obviously full credit to you. So that would be sort of great to see and keep building this concept and this community. So thanks so much and stay tuned for more touch designer videos.